My project is now we are moving from this microbees to their host. So uh, man, my main work is uh, focus on uh, genome and the genome assembly, especially the mammalian genomes and uh, their immune loci. So a um, few years ago, we start a collaboration uh, with New York Genome Center on the uh, whole genome assembly of a species called cotton rat. So I want to tell you the story about this. Uh, cotton rat is a uh, rat. Can I, Hello? Intel, can, we don't see your face. Maybe you can move the camera a bit. Okay. It's better. Yes. You know, you know, my face is not very important. I, I prefer this my face much more. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's a rat-sized rodent. Uh, you can find them in uh, United States, and uh, so they uh, they mainly uh, habit in woods, but sometimes invade the human dwellings and uh, feeding on some green vegetables. We know there are so many rodent species in the world. So wh what makes this species especially interesting is, so uh, concerning their uh, viral susceptibility, it is more similar to human than mouse. So uh, in, in, in the past, so it is served as a very important chain or position for a scientific study between mouse and the macaca. So, because uh, as, you, as you can predict, um, human and the mouse, they have quite a different immune system. And uh, but if you do many important research, for example, influenza, you need to passage the virus many times and make it adapt to a rodent host. And then, so the rodent may behave quite different and the virus become quite different. However, uh, cotton rats can be naturally infected by both human and bird influenza virus, and the whole symptom, the whole process of infection develop and uh, virus cleaning is, is very similar to human. Also, uh, nowadays people have discussed about, a lot about this so-called vaccine-enhanced disease, especially for the people who, who object to use the COVID-19 vaccine, they, people, in theory, this may happen and the people are worrying about that. Uh, now we, we can know that for the study of vaccine enhanced disease, the cotton rat is one of the most important model. Also, in addition to this, this the cotton rat are also susceptible to uh, HMPV or RSV, malice virus, uh, para-influenza virus, Vaccina virus and the human Aden virus. So uh, for, that, for that reason, the New York Genome Center started a project on the uh, coden rat whole genome assembly. So because this project is begun uh, many years ago and uh, it drops into a, a dead end because they only they, they use the 10x as the main uh, technique. And then nowadays the, the whole world is transferred into the long read and uh, so make, make this project a little bit very embarrassing. And uh, uh, we are talking with them and we, we say, okay, since we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, prove our, our genome assembly is the best in the world, how about we perform more and more, more um, deep and profound analysis and uh, looking for the reason of this viral susceptibility. So uh, that is the idea of the uh, project. First of all, we have invited a group, Feng Tang's group in Wellcome Trust Sun Institute to provide us the uh, chromosome painting. And then we can, we can uh, perform the uh, assembly into chromosomes. So at the right side of the screen, you can see this, uh, this method, basically uh, the group has isolated the mouse chromosome. They, they get each chromosome of mouse and then hybrid it onto the uh, cotton rat uh, megatype and then find out which region can 
it's, it's most similar to which uh, chromosome. And then with this data, we can uh, create a, a, a color type map like this. Here, you can see these colors is based on a uh, house mouse genome. And then uh, the upper part is the uh, common, uh, it's the cotton rat genome. And uh, you can easily see their relationship of the, of the chromosomes. And, uh, and then you can try to trace how, what kind of evolution between these species. Because keep in mind that um, the cotton rat is a so-called new world mice, which are a little bit more uh, close to hamster than the real mouse. So may I interrupt for a moment? Yo, hello. Uh, hi. Um, I noticed that these are all diagrammed as telocentric chromosomes, the centromere at the end. Yes. Which is true for the mouse. But actually yes. the karyotypes that, that I can see on the right-hand side, the actual pictures, uh, so, so the karyotype is the, the karyotype is to introduce the technique. So this is, this karyotype is the, another species. So it's not the cotton rat. It's not a cotton rat. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry so to interrupt. I, I should I should emphasize that because the cotton rat the cotton rat picture is very ugly because it's more remote to mouse and uh, yeah. the binding is weaker and a lot of noise. I see. I see. Yeah, it's a long way from mouse. Uh, so, uh, with, this, with this data, we can get all the uh, scaffolds of the, of the cotton rat assembly from 10x genomes and then reassemble them onto, uh, based, based onto the genome painting. And uh, you can, here I give you a comparison. So, we do this uh, genome of uh, this uh, chromosome uh, re, how to, say, how to say that it's chromosome assembly based on first is the mouse and the second is the uh, grasshopper mouse. The left side is the grasshopper mouse, which is another uh, new world mouse similar to the cotton rat. And uh, we use this species as a guideline. And then, so mm, we, fir we, first, uh, we, we first do our assembly based on, on our data and the mouse data, and then we we use the we use the grasshopper mouse as a confirmation to to confirm if they are similar or if we make any big mistakes, and uh, and indeed you can see that these two species has a lot of share a lot of similarity, and uh, this uh, can uh, give, can back up our data, especially many of the important uh, genome shuffling happened in the. Uh, we, we found in the scaffolds can be confirmed that by the grasshopper mouse, which is truly happened. And uh, here, uh, here you can see that there's uh, on grasshopper mouse, there's chromosome 21. It's a combination of house mouse 17 and house mouse, house mouse 12 in this uh, uh, brown color, and, uh, and in the middle, there's a green band, which is, which is chromosome 5. So very complex recombination. And uh, this structure is, uh, is observed again in the, in the cotton rat in the single uh, scaffold, which, which is probably true. And uh, this, has con this has further confirmed that these this two species, these two new world mice, uh, has very similar genome structure. And uh, with this method, we have successfully put 94% uh, of the assembly back to the pseudochromosomes. And uh, what it is 6%, uh, we, we cannot do, as mentioned in previous talk, previous talk they are repeat regions in the uh, eukaryotic animal, especially the centromere and the telomere. So at the moment, for the technical reason, it's very hard to uh, really resolve. So here in this picture, I have sh we, we are showing that, so for three new world mice, uh, CK is the segmented uh, cotton rat, and the Ancto is Onitromus teridus is the grasshopper mouse in America. 
And the paramuscus, which is the deer mouse, is exclu exclusively can be can be found exclusively in American, and uh, they 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 are very similar to, to each other, but have each of them has unique uh, recombinations or inversion and so on. So this proved that uh, this proved their phylogeny. So uh, the next uh, the next uh, question and uh, people probably all interested interested in this in this room is. Uh, what is happening in their genome, especially the in immunity loci in the cotton rat, and uh, what can be the potential reason for the viral susceptibility? So, uh, for uh, for this, uh, we encountered a lot of big problems. So uh, we noti we noticed that at first that this the, uh, the genome assembly can itself has a problem. In addition, this um, immune-related loci itself, they, uh, they, have a lot of, they have a lot of, of uh, selection on them, and uh, they are most dynamic region in the mammalian genome. Uh, the, fur the further problem we meet is this. So if you, uh, if you, see, this, if you see this fellow genetic tree in the left side, uh, the red alleles are from cotton rat. Uh, blue, uh, green, green ones are house mouse, and the black ones are human. You can immediately see that. So, for example, a single human gene. This we take this GSDMC as example. So there's a human, there's a single gene in human, and uh, in house mouse and the grasshopper mouse, they are not one-to-one -one homologs, but they are independent expansions. So uh, this, this makes the naming and the, the function analysis quite tricky because uh, if, you, if you work with uh, immunity, you, can not, you, you may notice that in the same gene family. So if there are several, several family members, some of the, uh, each of them may, to may have totally different function. For example, some are the effector genes while others are regulator which will inhibit this gene. So uh, in this case, compare them directly is, is very difficult. Uh, so on, on the right side, uh, we have shown the, uh, the genome structure of a human against a, a cotton rat and the, hu and the mouse against the cotton rat. We can see that uh, uh, in this case, and the human, the rat, uh, cotton rat, they, they are almost uh, uh, one to they have they have one to one relationship. However, in house mouse, there's a significant duplication. So uh, this is this kind of examples uh, is what we are looking for. So um, in fact, we are looking for for this uh, house mouse house mouse immune loci, especially the loci play important role in viral immunity. So. Uh, which part in cotton rat is more close to human than close to mouse. So uh, here, is, here I can show some examples. Uh, for the influenza immunity, one of the most uh, well-studied gene family is the MX proteins. And uh, uh, you can see human has MX1 and 2, and then we have mouse alleles, mouse MX1, MX2 in green, and then we, we find the same, uh, same homolog in cotton red. Everything so far so good. However, uh, in uh, these purple, purple genes, they are coming from the uh, deer mouse. So we, we see that MS1, MX1 and MX2 in deer mouse are in fact the uh, homolog of MX2 in mouse. So this is the second problem we noticed that if you study this kind of um, immune-related immune gene, this annotation and the gene name is highly unreliable. So this may make a lot of mistakes. So since we, we are a group of people studying this um, host, uh, host and the microbial uh, interaction, I think it is, very, it is very important to, to have a double check, 
especially to build a phylogenetic tree to check these gene names. Uh, because uh, if when we see when we read these uh, quarter red papers, we can we can see people announce they have uh, amplified the cotton red gene, uh, or cotton red homolog or of the, such genes. And then when we go back to the genome assembly, we cannot find them at all. So when we when we reconstruct the uh, phylogenetic tree of the whole gene family, we found that the, the nomenclature of gene is totally wrong. For example, uh, the mo one, one of the important uh, viral uh, resistant gene family, the ULBP family, so uh, they, are, they are ligands for the uh, natural, natural, natural kill cell uh, receptors. And then uh, we see that in human, we have RAT1E. And in mouse, we have the same gene, but they are definitely very direct parallel. And uh, ULBP3, one, ULBP1, 3, and so it is an independent expansion, especially in human. And uh, they, have, they have almost no direct relationship to mouse ULBP1 and 3. So uh, in a short word, mouse ULBP1 and 3, they are more similar to each other than the human paralogs, which should be the, the direct uh, paralog, right? And also, uh, so the human RAET genes are more similar to ULBP than any other mouse RAET. So in this case, we have decided to totally reconstruct the, the, the whole, uh, the immune-related loci we know playing important role to a virus, and then show people how is the evolution dynamic of this gene family. Uh, uh, here, I, I must mention that, uh, so although, although we found that the RET loci as, as the red, as the red allele here, uh, so cotton red almost lost all the RET loci, which is important in human and mouse virus uh, defense. However, we cannot draw any solid conclusion to say this is a reason of the viral susceptibility, susceptibility because this RET loci uh, itself is highly dynamic even in house mouse. Here we have uh, sequenced uh, the RET loci in, sev in several house mouse uh, inbred strands. You can see the copy number is ranged from one in cast the EIJ, EIJ loci, uh, mouse strand to uh, here they have seven different alleles in the north mouse. So in this case, we cannot draw any conclusion. Uh, so uh, here, is, here is the data we generated for these immune-related genes. We give, uh, we give this data several different uh, scenario. So if, if this is three species is all have one-to-one -one ortholog, and uh, they have a quite, a quite a similar order because house mouse should be uh, similar to cotton rat than human. Then we give, then we give it uh, the black color, means it's as expected. Also, uh, the second scenario is gene loss, which indicated by red color. And the third is expansion in one species. And the fourth is independent expansion. So either independent expansion, they lost their, uh, their phylogenetic relationship, relationship or, uh, or the similarity has totally changed. For example, the cotton rat is more similar to human than mouse. Then we have generated this figure to show these uh, important uh, viral, antiviral genes. So I know many people are working with virals in this group. And uh, if you noticed the important ones, uh, which we did not mention here, uh, please tell me and I, and I will add them in. Another problem is you may, you may notice that here's no MHC and, uh, and uh, 
other important gene families, for example, LY49 and so on. Uh, we feel very sorry about this because in our data and uh, for most of the uh, de novo assembly data in mammalian world, the, the MHC is undoable. If you read the, if you read the new uh, gorilla paper uh, published in Science a few years ago, they, they used the most fancy method, including high coverage PAC bio, and uh, the MHC is still un, unassembled, unassembled. So the main problem is most of these uh, animals, they are heterozygous. And if you have two, you have two, two alleles or two gene loci, which is totally different from each other, most of the current method cannot work. So uh, to, further, to, further, uh, to further confirm our data do not have big problem. Uh, to, con to confirm that, uh, so the data we observed is not coming from uh, bad assemble quality, we performed a further uh, check. So first of all, we go back to the we go back to the uh, annotation, and then we recheck all the annotation if they are true or not. So in this case, we have rediscovered many uh, important genes. For example, the M2. Uh, which is belonging to the AIM-like receptor loci. So in the original, in the original assembly and the notation, this gene cannot be discovered. However, when we go back to the raw data, especially, especially the raw read from the uh, from 10x genomes, we do see this uh, uh, similar read, and then we put them back. We found the, the gene is there. It is. Uh, Assembled but not annotated because because these genes seem too too different from their uh, mouse or human uh, autolog. Uh, other examples like this. So uh, there 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 are a lot of annotation mistakes in our. We have in some analyzed seventeen different gene families and we have manually corrected everything and if. If we announce a gene uh, lost, so that means we already checked the raw data. We assemble, we assembled all the raw reads, and uh, we put all the uh, all the reads with similarity to some gene which are annotated and assembled, and we truly cannot find any trace of this losing gene. And uh, I would I I would say that this data here is quite uh, reliable, uh, or we can say that's the, more, that's the best thing we can do. Uh, okay, so uh, this is what I want to tell people today. So I hope the, uh, the message bring, you can bring home is, first, we are highly interested in the host immune-related loci assembly. And we have a lot of experience on these loci. We know how to deal with them. And we know what kind of mistake people normally make. And we, we will try our best to avoid them. Second thing is when you read a paper and read, people declare a homolog or an ortholog in a totally no species, please keep in mind that this annotation or this nomenclature may be totally wrong. And uh, you. You are, see, you are looking at some different genes other than you are looking for. And, uh, and the third one is, so uh, this kind of uh, host and host pathogen co-evolution, they make uh, this immune-related loci too dy very dynamic. And uh, so the gene gains, gains and lose is frequent. So if you get a, if you get a data, always check the raw data and always check what's the, what's the possibility for the explanation to not give the conclusion so easily, so quickly. So thank you very much. And uh, I hope you have some questions to, questions to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Tao. Uh, if somebody has a question, 
we are a bit out of time, but uh, we can take a few questions. Otherwise, I am sure Tao will accept any email that you shoot him. Or... And I have a question. Okay, go with Jonathan. Um, so, Tao, what, what's known about the, the uh, natural viruses of the Sigmodon? I mean, does it have, is it, does it drop dead of virus infection all the time, or has it worked out a relationship with its own natural viruses? Okay, so uh, this, I, I didn't check all the virus. However, uh, from what I know, so they are natural carrier of a hunter virus, and they mm -hmm. can survive it. They, they can be infected to uh, most of the influenza virus, and they go through the whole process, they won't die. They won't die easily. So um, in my mind, and, and I'm not very sure about all the virus and so on, so they are susceptible, they can be infected, but they are mm -hmm. not die from them easily. Yeah, I see. I mean, someone, obviously, the, what's interesting from your point of view would be to know what the genes are that they use to resist their own viruses. I mean, you have, you know, we, we know about the resistance genes in, in, in mass musculus, we know about resistance genes in human, at least we know something about yes. that. Yes. And we know yes. which, which disease goes with which gene or with which allele of which gene. But I guess that information which is missing in Sigmodon. Yes, so uh, we have read a lot of papers and uh, nobody really draw this conclusion. The yeah. most uh, close one to your question is a group who in fact, uh, uh, in fact, a lung of uh, cotton rat with influenza and check all the gene regulations. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, this, is, this makes us very annoying. So they announced a lot of genes. And <laughs> when you check the, our de novo assembly, they do not exist at all. And uh, they <laughs> make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> that happens, yeah. Okay, thanks. Interesting. <laughs> 